The scripture lesson today is Mark chapter 5, verses 21 to 43. The girl restored to life and a woman healed. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and pleaded with him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from a flow of blood for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his cloak, I will be made well. Immediately her flow of blood stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned from the crowd and said, who touched my cloak? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say who touched me? He looked all around and saw to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the synagogue leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the synagogue leader, do not be afraid, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the synagogue leader's house, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl stood up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. May God bless these words to our understanding. In his book, Jesus, A New Vision, Marcus Borg lists out many different understandings of who Jesus was, very different experiences of who Jesus was. I was going to look up the list of one of them all, but apparently my copy of that book got added to the library in Atacokan 14 years ago because it's not on my shelf anymore. But among those understandings and experiences of Jesus were teacher, preacher, prophet, but we're also miracle worker and healer. The Gospels are very clear that Jesus is one who brought healing. We, in our rational minds, sometimes don't know what to do with the healing stories. We in our, are wanting to have everything fit into what we understand as the way the world works. Miracle stories don't always fit in very well. But Jesus was a healer. The Gospels are very clear. He brought healing to the world around him. In our stories today, we have two very desperate people. Two people who have lost all other chances. The synagogue leader, whose daughter is near death, and comes to Jesus saying, please, you have to help. I have nothing else. 
And Jesus says, take me to her. And as they're going, by this point in the gospel, Jesus can't avoid the crowds. He tries. And often in Mark's gospel, Jesus will heal somebody and say, now don't tell anybody. They never listen. And part of the reason I think Jesus keeps saying, don't tell anybody, is because he knows what's going to happen. He knows the crowds are going to come. As I say, they never listen. So by everywhere Jesus goes by now, a crowd gathers and sort of follows him around. And while he's making his way through the crowd, a woman who again is in utter desperation. Twelve years. She's bankrupted herself trying to find a cure. Twelve years. If I can just but touch his cloak. I don't even need to talk to him. I don't need to draw attention to myself. If I just touch the fringe of his cloak. Maybe that will work. Because the understanding was around the countryside that this was a man through whom power f flowed. This was a man who could work miracles. This is a man who brought healing. If I just but touch his cloak. And the image I have is of her sort of lunging through the crowd and brushing the cloak. And Jesus knows something's happened. Jesus knows that something has happened. So he stops. And he looks around and says, who touched me? You've got a crowd. Imagine those places you've been where, there's, where you can barely move because the crowd is so tight. Who touched me? What do you mean, who touched you? No, something's happened. It wasn't just the jostling of the crowd. It wasn't just the people. Something special happened. Who touched me? And the woman who was trying to remain, just, I, I don't want to make a fuss. I just, I just want to heal. And the story comes out. And it's an interruption because Jesus is on his way to do something else, something important. Sometimes the great ministry happens in the interruptions. And he looks at the woman. And he sees her desperation. But he sees new hope. Because in just the touching of the cloak, she was right. All she needed to do was touch the cloak. And the power flowed. And she was made well. And he blesses her and sends her on her way. I can only imagine what poor Jairus is thinking at this point. It's like, um, um, uh, 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 we're, we're, uh, uh, we're, what are you doing? Come, what are you doing? We're in a hurry here. Come. Because who knows how much time is left. And indeed, while this is going on, while the interruption is taking place, and great ministry is happening to this woman who is desperate, who has been cast out because there may be some ritual impurity pieces. In Jewish law, people were ritually impure most of the time. That's why you had rules about what you needed to do to become clean. But even more so, if you're sick for 12 years, you're not in the center of society. By being sick for 12 years, you've managed to work your way out to the edges. And Jesus stops to focus on her and says, you're back in. Important interruption. Important ministry happens in the interruptions. But still it's an interruption. And Jairus, well, honest. Let's be honest. If we were him, we wouldn't want to be dealing with the interruption. We would want to be dealing with our daughter who is lying in her bed dying. And while the interruption happens, people show up and say, you're too late. You're too late. And Jesus says, no, I'm not. Let's go. And orders everybody else into the house. 
and waked her. She says, she's just asleep. She's just asleep. Can I leave the coop? And she gets up, and her family who was torn apart, whose hopes had been dashed, whose hearts were broken, is restored. In the midst of desperation, multiple people in our story find new hope. And to me, that's part of why we tell the healing stories. It's those words of hope, which is why I asked, what does healing mean? Because healing means a variety of things to a variety of people. I remember one person I was talking with who had just been diagnosed with cancer and was told, this is treatable. This is not curable. often when we think of healing, we think cure. But for that person, treatable meant some quality of life. And this was an older person who knew that they, were, they had more years behind them than they had ahead of them. Curable would have been nice, but treatable was important. He, there was healing in that. So here are some of the other things that people had to say about what healing might mean. Peace of mind, mental, spiritual, and physical health, relief and feeling wonderful, being happy with yourself, finding support to recover from stress and injury. To me, healing means being able to move past or beyond a hurt, either with or without forgiveness. To get better, love helps. Work, prayer, willpower. When we say that Jesus continues to bring healing to our lives, I encourage us to remember these sorts of things. The, church, the news media is full of stories of faith healers. It has been for generations. There was a Little House on the Prairie episode where a faith healer came to Walnut Grove and claimed to have healed a boy and hadn't. He had taken the, the psychosomatic effect had been taking the pain away, but sometimes pain is our thing of telling us something else has to happen. When Jesus brings healing, it doesn't always mean a cure. It doesn't always mean life will be zap, everything's good. I think our woman with the hemorrhage, yes, she was healed of that, but she had to accommodate to a new way of being because after 12 years, you're pretty much focused on this. Healing meant more work to happen. Jairus' daughter is only 12 when she's healed. She's got her whole life ahead of her. There will be struggles. There will be slips. There will be trips. Healing doesn't automatically mean life is going to be great from now on. But wouldn't that be nice? But it doesn't. But when, G when we talk about Jesus as the healer who brings healing power into our lives, I think it does two things to us. First, it asks, forces us to ask, from what do I need to be healed? Where do I need Jesus' healing power to flow through me, into me, to change me, to transform me? And sometimes it's the knee which doesn't work very well anymore. And sometimes it's the back that hurts every morning when you get up. And sometimes it's the racing anxiety when you think about going outside. And sometimes it's the, I'm not good enough. I'll never be good enough. Why do people put up with me? Healing comes in many forms on many causes. So the first thing we do when we recognize that Jesus in our lives is a healing force is it pushes us to ask, why do we need to be healed? The second thing it pushes us to ask is, what are the signs of those healing happening? 
What are the signs of our life being transformed, of God's power flowing around us? Because I don't think we find them if we don't look. I mean, it's, in the story today, it was pretty obvious that healing had happened. But I think healing in much of our lives is smaller steps, is easier to miss. But when Jesus heals, when God's healing power flows around us and in our lives, we're restored to something. Ironically, it may be that we're restored to something new, which doesn't make a lot of sense. But we're restored to being who God created us to be. Maybe not fully. As I say, sometimes healing is step by step, not kazam. But Jesus brings healing. Jesus brings restoration. Sometimes for the knee that aches constantly. Sometimes for the mind that tells us we're not good enough. Or the heart that races with anxiety. Jesus heals us, restores us to who God calls us to be. May we all be open to being healed, to being restored. Amen. Amen.